Please be aware that the comments, views, opinions shared on this podcast are not meant to diagnose a medical problem and or legal problem. If you do have a medical problem or legal problem, kindly contact a professional. Welcome to An Apple a Day, a podcast, a resource, a community. Share your experiences and learn from others as we overcome barriers and learn to live a happy, healthy life with a disability. Welcome to the community. Here's your host, Jimmy Apple. Oh, I can't take this anymore. I need it. I need a break. I need a, I need to get out. I need to have a vacation. I got to go somewhere. I just can't take being stuck in the house anymore. I wake up in the morning. I go to the bathroom. From the bathroom, I go to the kitchen. I make breakfast. From the, from the kitchen, I go into the living room, sit on the couch. I watch TV. Maybe during the TV, I get up and I go to the bathroom again. Come back, look out the front window, sit by the door. Time to make lunch. Go out, have lunch. Come back, go to the bathroom. Come back and sit on the couch again. Watch TV. Look out the front window. Look out the back window. Your spouse comes home. You have dinner. Talk about their job. Go in, watch TV. Get up, get washed, go to the bathroom, go to bed, wake up and do it all over again tomorrow. I need a vacation. Hi, my name is Jimmy Apple, and I'm your host for An Apple a Day. An Apple a Day is brought to you by www.famousapple.com. How you feeling today, my friends? How you feeling? Feeling better? Feeling stronger? Feeling better than last week? I hope so. So, what do you think? Do you think you need a vacation? I think we all need a vacation. The funny thing is, is that people that go to work every day, they look at us and they think, well, we're on a permanent vacation. You know, you're handicapped, you're disabled. You don't go to work, you're home, you're watching TV, you can sleep in if you want. Yeah, okay. And then we're looking at them going, wow, you know, you get up in the morning, you have a purpose for getting up. You go out, you grab a cup of coffee and a donut on your way to work. You get to work, you get to see your co-workers, you talk for a while, you know, shoot the breeze, what did you do last night, how's the family, and then you go in, you go to work, you pound away at work, you come up, you got a 15 minute break, you go out, get a cup of coffee, stand in the lunchroom or the break room, talk to some of your co-workers, have a couple of laughs, you go back to work, you work for another hour and a half, bing, it's lunchtime, you shoot the breeze, you're talking to other co-workers, hey, what are your plans for tonight? What are you doing this weekend? And you go back to work after that. You pound away at work for the afternoon. Four o'clock, you're out of there. And you're on your way home. Everybody seems to think everybody else has it easy. Now, for us, as disabled people, we look forward to that. We would, we would die to have that. Well, we have a purpose every morning when we wake up. What are we going to do? We, we know where we're going. But yet, the people at work every day... They look at us and they say, we would love to have that. Yeah, you can sleep as long as you want and you have the day off. The only thing is, is they're thinking that they could do what we have, but without the disabilities. You know, nothing to hold them back. They just have the time off. And we're thinking, yeah, we could we could do this, but we don't have the experience. But like I said, grass is always greener on the other side. But one thing that we all have in common is we need a vacation. We actually have to get away from our daily grind. We have to see something new just to just even for a couple of days. It doesn't have to be an extravagant vacation. No, it doesn't have to be a cruise, a road trip. Get in the car, drive a couple of hours, stay somewhere out of out of your area. I mean, there's just so many things you can do that aren't going to cost you a lot of money, but it gives you a change of scenery. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about vacations and different different locations, places that aren't expensive, and places that are handicapped and disabled friendly. There's some places that you just can't go because they cater to, I don't want to say normal people, but people that aren't handicapped or disabled. They cater to them. And yes, there's some places in those places that have access, but not a lot. Now, one of the places I found that have a lot of access for handicapped and disabled people is in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. This is a road trip away. If you live in, just say you live in New York, to drive to Myrtle Beach, you're talking about a nine-hour drive, nine, ten-hour drive even. It's not far. I mean, you could fly there if you want. It's going to take you three hours to fly there, but it's going to be a lot more expensive. 
I mean, the funny thing is, is you fill up your gas up north and you keep driving as long as that gas tank, as long as that full tank is going to last you. Of course, the further south you get, the less expensive the gas gets. It's unbelievable. But yeah, Myrtle Beach, I went down there, uh, I believe it was 2012, and it was myself, my wife, my sister-in-law, her husband, and my wife's aunt. Now, we didn't stay in a hotel. What we did is we, we rented a house because I had to bring my pets with me. My wife's aunt had to bring her dog with her. And a lot of the hotels, anywhere you go, a lot of hotels aren't exactly that pet friendly. So we rented a house and I did this over the computer, sight unseen. When I tell you, we rented a mansion. The house was three stories tall. It had an elevator in the garage. So it was handicap accessible. It was right on the in- on the intercoastal and every bedroom in the house had a terrace and every terrace had a barbecue grill on it. Gas barbecue grill. It was all piped into the house. No tanks or anything like that. Every terrace looked out over the water. Downstairs in the kitchen, this was a gourmet kitchen. It had a center island that had to be 12 by 12. The living room had floor-to-ceiling windows that looked out over the intercoastal. Downstairs from that, on the ground floor, you had a big, big room, big family room, huge TVs in every room. There had to be 60-inch TVs in every room and cable. All of this is included in your price. And lounge furniture. It was like you were at a, a club on the water. You go outside, there was an in-ground pool. There was a jacuzzi hot tub type of deal. Over on the other side, there was an enclosure with the barbecue grill so you can barbecue and be out of the sun while you're doing it. Lounge chairs all over. Then there was your own private dock. You could bring your boat to this. I think it was up to 35 or 45 foot. You could bring a boat in there and dock it at your house. It was amazing. Now, with the house came a jet ski and it was all ours to use it was all included in the price now you're probably saying well how much did all of this cost you well it cost us two thousand dollars for the week and but when you think about it and you break it up between five people you're talking about four hundred dollars for a week in myrtle beach you can't beat it you can't beat it and you could have as many cars there as you want and it was on a private island that secured by a gate you had to have a, a gate code to get in private road naturally and all mansions along this one nicer than the other and it was just so quiet so peaceful at night you'd hear the water lapping up against the shores every bedroom was so huge i mean you could play touch football in these bedrooms (laughs) they were huge and every bedroom had a bathroom it was just such a beautiful beautiful place they had a dining room again floor to ceiling windows and you're looking out over the intercoastal beautiful But then again, you know, that's where we stayed. But now you get out into Myrtle Beach. And one of the things about Myrtle Beach, and it's the truth, they have 60 miles of beach. 60 beautiful miles of beach. And you get out there and you're looking out over the ocean. As far as you can see, all you see is ocean. The water's clean. The water was warm when we were there. And we were there in the winter, actually. The beach itself is known as the Grand Strand. It's, oh, gorgeous isn't the word. You have these hotels along the beach and you look up and again, these hotels, if you're not traveling with pets, rent a hotel room and your terraces, all your terraces look out over the ocean. I, I just can't say enough about that. Now, the other thing is if you like golf, there's a hundred golf courses, a hundred in Myrtle Beach. If you like miniature golf, there's miniature golf just about on every corner of the main drag. If you like seafood, I did, I went to many restaurants in Myrtle Beach and not one of them was a disappointment. The seafood was to die for there. It was great, the seafood. Now, the other thing too is if you're a shopper, if you like to shop, there's these outlet shops all over and you can get great deals there now another thing i want to tell you about is when you go down the main drag in myrtle beach you're going to see these stores on both sides of the street they're going to say five five dollar t-shirts five dollar bathing suits you know what stop it's definitely worth the time and the money to stop in these stores again it's phenomenal i can't say enough about it you go into these stores And yes, you can get $5 bathing suits. You can get $5 t-shirts. You can get $5 sweatshirts. You can spend anywhere in these stores, anywhere from 50 cents to $500 if you wanted to, depending on what you wanted. But the bargains that they're telling, that they're advertising, they actually have. And they do have the $5 bathing suits. You can can go in there, get a bathing suit, 
a towel, a beach towel, flip flops, and a cover up, and you're gonna spend 20 bucks. Can you imagine? Where are you gonna get that? Where else are you gonna get that? And snacks, snack shops, ice cream parlors, they're all there, as well as the, the regular stores. You got CVS, you got Walmart, you got, uh, I don't know if Kmart's still there, but all these big stores, and then you have the outlet stores not too far away. It's a place that's chock full, and there's something there for everyone, everyone, and everything, every place that I went, was handicap accessible. Every place. There's just so much to do there. And it's inexpensive. That's the big thing. It's inexpensive. We're on fixed incomes, all of us. So it's not, you're not going to go there and blow the ranch going there. You're going to go there. You can save up a couple of bucks. And houses, all right, let me just get back to that. I said I rented a house for 2000 a week. There's a lot less expensive houses, a lot less. And here's a tip. Don't take the house at the price they're advertising. Haggle. My house, the one we rented, I started out with that house as a joke because it was Thanksgiving. We were looking to go away for Christmas. So it was Thanksgiving. We had already eaten dinner and we're sitting there, <laughs> bloated in the living room, take out the laptop. And my wife and her sister are looking at houses to rent down in Myrtle Beach. And they come, they come up with this one. They go, look at this. This is beautiful. And I looked at it. Yeah, it's beautiful. But they had a price tag under $3,200 a week. And I was like, where are we going to get this money from? And she says, I know, I know. Then as a joke, because they say they'll, they'll answer within a half hour, I wrote, them, I wrote them a quick email. And I said, well, I'm on a fixed income. I really can't afford $3,200. I want to rent it for the week of Christmas. Can you do it for fifteen hundred? And I figured them to to write me back and call me a couple of choice names. They came back and they said, "Well, we can't do it for fifteen, but we can do it for two thousand. All of us just sat there and looked at the screen and said, "What do we do? Do you, two thousand is doable? You know, between all of us, two thousand is doable." And we thought about it for about fifteen minutes. And then my wife says to me, she says, why don't, why don't we ask them what, what we have to do to reserve the house? And my sister-in-law agreed, my brother-in-law, my, my wife's aunt, everybody agreed. So I wrote back, I said, well, what's the next step if I want to rent the house for that week? $2,000. I said, what, is, what are the extra fees? She wrote back, she says, I'm including everything in the 2000 Taxes, the dog fees, the cleanup fees, and the linen fees. I said, you're kidding me. I said, okay, how do I, how do I get in touch with you to give you a deposit? And she gives me her name and everything. I said, you know, what bank do you bank with? And it happened to be the same bank we did. I said, I can do a wire transfer right now. So I did. I sent it over. And the day before we were going there, I sent the balance. And there it was. Everything was waiting right there for me. Like, just like they said, I went and I picked up the key. And oh my God, it was beautiful. It was set up. It was clean. It was just a nice experience. And if you look on some of these houses for rent sites, vacation houses, like I said, you can haggle, you can give them your price and they'll come back with a different price. It, it's enjoyable. I, I, it's the best word I can use for it. The whole process was enjoyable. All right, let's take a quick break here. Take a 30 second break and we'll continue on the other side. An Apple a Day is brought to you by www.famousapple.com. Famousapple.com is the home site for this podcast. There you're going to find articles about the topics we discuss. You're going to find our connections to our Facebook page. And you're even going to find connections to our private chat board. So take a minute. Go over. Visit www.famousapple.com. But please wait till the end of this podcast. Don't run out on me now. Let's get back to the discussion. And we're back. That wasn't so bad, was it? And let's get back to Myrtle Beach here. There's a lot to do there. There's so much to do. One of the things I want to tell you about, now the reason you go to Myrtle Beach is to go to the beach, right? For the longest time, they thought people in wheelchairs, well, it was kind of iffy if they could go to the beach. But down at Myrtle Beach... They have beach-going wheelchairs. They have soft wheels. They're free, but it's limited to one-hour use. And they're available at 22 different lifeguard stations in Myrtle Beach in the summer. Off-season, like the fall and the winter, they're available at the police stations. And it's free. So there's one way of getting onto the beach. Another way of getting onto the beach is on a golf cart. Believe it or not, you can rent the golf cart. As long as you have the handicap placard and you display it, on your golf cart, you can drive the cart onto the Grand Strand beaches, not to tour the beach, but to get to a spot on the beach. The golf cart rentals are available through a company called Jack's. And their phone number there, if you want to check it out beforehand, is 
843-249-6445. That's 843-249-6445. And that's Jack's Golf Car Rentals. There's beach points all over. All over there's beach points and there's boardwalks going down to the beach. You know, different, they vary in width. So that's something to check out while you're there too. Now, another activity you can do down there, if you're a golfer, if you enjoy golf and unfortunately you're in a wheelchair, there's a place called the Dragon's Lair Fantasy Golf at Broadway at the beach. They have a wheelchair accessible course and special putters for, for users of wheelchairs. If off season, you can ask for a special seasonal discount. Now, the phone number to Dragon's Lair is 843-444-3215. That's 843-444-3215. That's the Dragon Lair Fantasy Golf at Broadway at the Beach. It's interesting. Now, Broadway at the Beach. Now, this place here I've been to, and I loved it. There's, I can't say enough nice things about it. Broadway at the Beach is miles of boardwalk over and around water for viewing and strolling. You can park your wheelchair at the top of the bridge and use the vending machines to buy food to feed the ducks and the large koi. There's also this IMAX theater there with a screen that's six stories tall and 3D. That's phenomenal. Now, another thing they have is a hard rock park. The park offers wheelchair rentals for the convenience of park guests with disabilities, both wheelchairs and electronic convenience vehicles like the scooters or electric wheelchairs. They're for rent at the rental office located at, at the front of all access entry plaza. Wheelchair rental fees are $10 a day and the electric, the scooters are $35 a day. Now, think about that for a second. Now, if you have your own wheelchair, it, it would make perfect sense for you to bring it with you. Why would you want to pay $10 a day? Just say you're there for five days. That's 50 bucks. If you take one of those scooters, the electric scooters, at $35 a day for five days, you're looking at $175. There's a lot more you could do with the $175 than rent the scooter. So if you have your own equipment, by all means, bring it there. It doesn't make sense to spend that much money. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of email addresses that you can check out. The first one is resources for disability, travel, and recreation, Myrtle Beach. I'm going to spell this out to you. It's makoa.org, O-R-G, forward slash travel dot htm. That's M-A-K-O-A dot org forward slash travel dot htm those are the resources for disability travel and recreation now for people with developmental disabilities it's new dot org. that's new directions travel dot org and that's for people with developmental disabilities now Here's the information from the site for the United Spinal Association. It's usatecguide dot org forward slash index dot php. That's usatechguide dot org forward slash index dot php. Those are just a couple of helpful websites you can go to and look at if you're traveling with the disability. Here's something else. Here's a phone number you can call for Myrtle Beach Activities. All right, you can call 843-918-8725. That's 843-918-8725 for Myrtle Beach Activities. You won't be sorry going down to Myrtle Beach. It's not expensive, not expensive at all, and you're going to have a great time. You're going to make some great memories in Myrtle Beach. Now, one thing I do want to give you, too, whether you're going to Myrtle Beach or wherever you're going, some travel tips. Number one, when you're traveling anywhere you're going, bring your med medication list with doses and times. So this way there's no forgetting. Bring your medications in the prescription bottles. It's illegal to have your medication in plastic bags. You have to have the prescription bottle with you. And if you don't, you could end up getting arrested. Bring all your doctor's phone numbers and fax numbers. Bring your medical insurance cards and IDs. Bring any med cards that you have for stents or pins or screws in, inside your body. 
I have probably about 10 or 15 different cards, but I bring them all with me because God forbid a metal detector goes off for some reason, you have it with you. Plus, if there's a medical emergency, they have all that information. Plan ahead and make reservations for all for all your travel, for, for handicap rooms especially. Check for the proximity a place to rent medical equipment or get parts. God forbid something happens with the wheels on your chair or what have you. Check for ground transportation for handicap accessibility. Now, most ground transportation are handicap accessible, but just check. Check the attractions you want to go to for make sure they're handicap accessible. Travel agents are available for handicap travel. You can call any travel agent and do it through them, but I think, honestly, for a road trip, you could do it on your own. Just simply call ahead. Another piece of information I'd like to give you is the official website for Myrtle Beach. You ready? It's visitmyrtlebeach.com. That's V-I-S-I-T-M-Y-R-T-L-E-B-E-A-C-H.com. At that website, you can download the visitor's guide. You can get coupons for different attractions in Myrtle Beach. It's a very informing website for Myrtle Beach itself. Check out Myrtle Beach. Check out the website. See what, see if it's something that you'd like. I would highly recommend it, personally. Just because we're disabled doesn't mean that we can't go out and enjoy ourselves just like everybody else, right? So, start making plans for your vacations, whether it be summertime, fall, winter, spring. But plan it out. Always make sure you plan ahead. So, thanks a lot for listening to me this week. I want to leave you with one more thing. Always remember, things can always be worse. We'll talk about another destination next time. And if you have any suggestions on places that you've been that you'd like to pass on to anyone else in our community, drop me an email at admin at famousapple.com. That's A-D-M-I-N at famousapple.com. Do me a favor, please subscribe to this podcast. This way you never miss an episode. And leave us a rating on the bottom here. I'd appreciate it. Okay, have a great week, my friends, and I will talk to you next week. Thanks again for stopping by. Thanks for listening to An Apple a Day with Jimmy Apple, your gateway to a happy, healthy life. Join our community at www.famousapple.com. See you next time.